I'm going to move forward now, but rather than just looking at the compressor settings, I want to look at how we can use the sidechain instance, and you'll notice I'm using the C1 compressor sidechain here. I want to use this instance of C1 so that I can use the EQ graphical mode down here to focus in or narrow down on specific frequencies that I want to attenuate. In this tutorial I'm going to look at attenuating sibilance, but of course you can use the principles of what I'm about to show you on to be honest any type of attenuation. So as I say we're looking at this instance C1 compressor sidechain. And here, within this graphical view, I can focus in on specific frequencies within this audio track, and I've reverted back to the vocal file. I can pick out specific frequencies where I know sibilance is occurring, and I've already done some tests, and the sibilance is occurring around about, well, between 6.5 and 7k. So those are the frequencies I want to attenuate but I'm trying to make it easy for myself by using a couple of different plugins. Of course here I'm using this C1 compressor sidechain, and individually, on its own, I can probably focus in on the specific sibilant areas, but I want to make it easy for myself, so I've brought in a different plugin too. It's this one here, this Blue Cat's Frequency Analysis plugin, that allows me to see a visual representation of the specific sibilant energy, and as I say, it's around about, well, it's just below the 7k mark. Now, to show you this in action, I'm just going to re engage this plugin, and then during playback, I can focus in on the particular area where the sibilant energy is. Let's have a quick listen. Maybe we don't realize it's over now between me and you. Maybe we don't realize it's over now between me and you. Maybe we don't realize it's over. Okay, so as you heard there, the sibilance sort of pokes up around about the 6.5, maybe 6.7 kilohertz area. So, with this knowledge in hand, I'm just going to re-engage or activate our C1 compressor once more by clicking on here, and then as I say, using this graphical representation down here for our EQ, I can focus in and narrow down the frequency area that I want to attenuate. First of all, I want to make this here a bandpass filter, rather than the other three choices, low pass, high pass and band reject. As I say, I'm going to go for band pass. And then, for no other reason than I know it sounds better, I'm going to click on here, look ahead, and then work my way up to the EQ mode here. Now, as you can see, I've got three choices. Wide band, side chain, and split. Now, there is a slight difference between side chain and split. I'll get to this in a moment. If I were to use this option, sidechain, it would mean that whatever I focus my energy area on, whatever that frequency area is, and this could be quite wide or quite narrow, whatever area that was, and maybe it was 7 kHz, well C1 here would now focus in on that area, and any time it detected that area, it would consequently dip our audio signal by whatever compression setting we use. And as you can see, it's quite easy to change our frequency area. We would just click on here and simply sweep up and down until we find the frequency area that we want to focus on and consequently compress. And in this example, because we've chosen sidechain and the bandpass option, then in red there, we can see that this is the particular frequency area that we will be focused upon. But as I say, that's not really what I want for our example because I want to DS only that particular narrow frequency area and dip it by a couple of dB, maybe two or three decibels, but leave all the remaining frequencies intact. Well, if I left it to sidechain, this isn't quite going to work the way that I want it to work, because left at sidechain, whatever frequency we set it at, it will dip, once detected, it will dip the whole of our frequency range. Whereas if I flick over to split, 
Well, this has a similar effect in that whatever frequency area that we choose, and I'm going to be choosing around about 6.5 up to about 7K, that particular frequency area that I choose will trigger the compressor, although I've not set it yet. Whatever frequency area is detected, determined by us, now in split mode will dip by our compressor settings only that narrow frequency area. And that's the difference between using split mode and bandpass. Now to make my life easier, I'm going to come down to the monitor section here. At the moment we're monitoring the full audio signal, but in this example I want to monitor the sidechain so I can sweep around the frequency area within this EQ graph and try and focus in more precisely on the area at which I want to duck. So with it set to sidechain, of course I can now drag around hunting out the particular frequency area that I want to attenuate. Now as I said a few moments ago, I have made it easier for myself by using that Blue Cat frequency analysis plugin. I know it's around about 7k, or just below anyway, and my threshold will be around about minus 12 to minus 20 dB. Now even though I'm armed with this information, it probably won't do me any harm to listen back to the track, and now that my monitor section is set to sidechain, what I'm going to be listening to is exactly that, the sidechain input which in actual fact filters out the majority of our signal and what remains is only that part of our signal that we have now set within our EQ section, in this case around about 6.7k. Anyway, just so that we can go through the process, I'll start playback and hunt around with my frequency area and the Q setting too, in case I need to narrow down this focus. Maybe we don't realize it's over now between me and you. Maybe we don't realize it's over now between me and you. Maybe we don't realize it's over now between me and you. Maybe we don't realize. It's over now between me and you. Okay, great stuff. As we saw there, not only did I focus in on the specific area that I wanted to duck, the sibilant area, but I've now set the threshold and the ratio and the attack and the release so that with my EQ mode set to split, whenever that frequency area is detected and the threshold goes above, well, nearly minus 15 dB there, then any sibilance will be ducked by around about 3 decibels. And this will be very quick because I've got my attack set to the fastest setting and my release set to a fast setting too. So as soon as that sibilance is detected, it will be ducked by a couple of decibels, but the signal will revert back to the normal setting very quickly because my release time is quick too. Okay, now I think I've got this about right. But, just to check, I'm going to take my playhead back to the beginning of the vocal file, and rather than just looping around that small section with that sibilance poking through, with this C1 compressor sidechain set as it is, I'm going to play the whole track back, the vocal, the piano, and the cello, so that I can evaluate I've got it correct, i.e. this sibilance ducking. So, let's have a quick listen. Here we go. Remember the time you were mine and you promised always there Cause I know that I do All our days turned to haze and vanished in the air I feel like we have to There isn't anything, baby That we can do Maybe we don't realize It's over now between me and you Okay, brilliant. It's only very subtle, but that's what I want. I want the ducking of the sibilance there to be around about 2, possibly 3 decibels. 
Now, because I've set this to split, it means that only that narrow frequency band will be ducked rather than the detection process working out where that sibilance is set by the EQ setting and the band pass, but subsequently compressing the whole signal. That's not really what I want. I only want the sibilance to be ducked, leaving the rest of the vocal intact. OK, so that's the process and I'll leave it here then and I'll move forward once more.